Hello, welcome to Alice Air Guns. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Crossman CO2 valve and how you can modify it to get more power. In front of us here is a standard Crossman CO2 valve. When it's inside the air gun, it sits in the main tube like this. This is a transfer port hole. Uh, we have the transfer port sitting on top of it that goes up through the steel tube and into the bottom of the barrel, and it allows gas to come out of the valve and into the barrel behind the pellet and shoot it down the barrel and out of the air gun. How it does that also at the same time, and let me grab a CO2 cylinder real quick here. When it's sitting in the tube, it's sitting with the CO2 cylinder arranged just like this. CO2 cylinder slides in the end of the gun, and there is a screw that screws down on the end of that tube, pushing it tight against the valve. And then when you go ahead and fire the first shot, the striker inside the air gun hits on the end of this valve stem, forcing it forward, little let me see if we can see it here. A little point comes out the end of the valve and punctures the CO2 cylinder, goes back in like that, and then that goes ahead and lets CO2 flow into the valve. There's a little gasket or actually a seal right there to keep it from leaking, and they're pushed against each other quite firmly. So that's how it works in basic operation. This valve stem is attached to what we call a poppet that we will um, look at in a moment here, but that regulates the CO2 being released to come up through the transfer port and fire the pellet. When the valve stem is all the way to the rear and the hammer is pulled back here, there's no pressure on it, it's sealed, and when the hammer is released, it hits the valve stem, pushing it down hard. And here you can see that coming all the way up like it does. And um, that goes ahead and releases the charge of CO2 that's sitting inside this valve and lets it fly up into the barrel behind the pellet and send the pellet on down the barrel. Now, if we want to modify this, if you happen to be a CO2, a Crossman CO2 target pistol like the um, 2300T or the 2300S, those valves have a spacer installed at the factory. And I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this. The valve's body is made up of two pieces screwed together. There is a seal between the two of them right there, that is replaceable. And inside the valve body, well, first thing we can do, let's leave it in there for a moment. But in the 2300T and 2300S, Crossman installed a brass spacer, which takes up part of the space. It, it reduces the volume inside the chamber of this valve. If you happen to have either of those pistols, you can increase the valve volume by taking that spacer out. And all that you have to do to do that is go ahead, remove the um, pop it, valve stem assembly there, and then bang the valve on the table to where you can get that spacer to start coming out, and then grab it with your fingers or a plier and um, now let me knock that in a hand. Oh, there we go. I got it out. And you can remove that. That's going to give you more capacity to store CO2 inside the valve. Therefore, you'll have more CO2 to release when the valve is opened. And, and you'll have a larger charge of gas exiting here and pushing the pellet down the barrel. Now, if we want to increase the basic CO2 valve, the, the standard CO2 valve, and gain additional performance, one of the simplest ways to do that is to increase the volume 
the CO2 capacity of this valve. We'll go ahead and store a bigger charge. Just like Crossman uses a spacer to reduce the charge in the target pistols, so they shoot at a lower velocity, but they get more shots out of a CO2 capsule. Uh, if we want to go ahead and increase the CO2 being stored, a very easy way to do that is to remove part of these threads. Not all of these threads are required to effectively lock these two pieces together. Actually, only two or three um, threads are enough to go ahead and keep those very tightly sealed. CO2 is not that high a pressure. We're talking about eh, 900 PSI roughly. So, you know, if you've worked with other guns like PCPs, you know, 900 PSI is almost nothing in terms of compressed air and um, compressed gas. And just a few threads of this brass valve assembly is more than enough to keep it safe and secure. Crossman simply does it this way to ease the manufacture. When you look inside of this, we'll remove that spring, remove the poppet, and when you look inside of here, it's simply a matter of easing manufacture. You can see the threads go way down in there, and this piece has been designed such that those threads go down and fill up that space, leaving a nice smooth and reduced diameter cavity inside of this, inside of this valve. Now, part of why they do that is to make the gun more efficient. They're not trying to limit the volume like they are when they put this spacer in, but they want you to be able to get 40 shots or more out of a CO2 canister or CO2 capsule. However, if you're looking to increase power, which many people are, we can do that again by increasing the internal capacity so that when the striker or the hammer hits the end of the valve stem, and you'll see here what's happening inside there is this valve stem has a seal material, a synthetic material, that's put down in the bottom. And if you can see inside of the, um, let me see if I can get light in there. Inside of the valve itself, around this hole internally, uh, let me see if I can um, actually, I don't think that's enough light. But if you can see down in there, Surrounding that hole is a raised portion in the brass, like a lip that sits up from the bottom of the valve floor, if you will. And that raised portion seals against the synthetic material at the bottom of the poppet. And that is what keeps, and there's also a spring here, as you see, and this spring pressure because the spring rides against the top of this um, valve assembly. The spring pressure keeps that poppet pushed so that that valve is sealed. The raised floor surrounding the hole is pushed tight, and that part is sitting right here. And the poppet resides basically right about here, so that the CO2 stored in this portion can't make it to the transfer port area unless something strikes this and moves it forward like that, allowing the CO2 to race around, and the only place it has to go is out that hole in the top, and it comes flying up through here. That's why later on when you talk about people with enlarged transfer ports, or if you go further down the uh, rabbit hole of power tuning, you make this hole larger, you also angle it to give the gas a smoother, a smoother um, area to travel through. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about a simple, straightforward way to increase the power of your Crossman CO2 air gun. And how we're going to do that is 
by going ahead and using, in our case, we're just going to use a little hacksaw, and we'll go ahead and document this for you. But to go ahead and cut off this bottom portion of threads, and that is considerably thicker, you'll see, than the spacer is that the factory uses for the target pistols. So we're basically going to remove all of this material from the inside of that valve. And that does provide a substantial increase in the internal capacity of the valve. That way, when the hammer goes ahead and, and strikes the valve, uh, strikes the end of the valve stem here, and the poppet moves up and it dumps all of the gas that's stored in here. And you'll notice when the poppet moves up like that, well, I've got a spring out now so I can do it by hand. Let me go through there. When the hammer strikes it and pushes that all the way up, it will go ahead and if there was a CO2 cartridge sitting there, that point enters the CO2 cartridge to cut it off, to block the flow of CO2 from the cartridge. That way, this valve acts as what air gun designers call a dump system. It takes the gas stored inside this, and when hit, it dumps everything in there. No additional gas is being fed from the CO2 capsule. Then, because that's under spring pressure, when the hammer has struck it and retracts, this closes again, and since the spring's not there, it's a little stiff to move back, but um, the valve closes again, retracts like that, and that allows additional CO2 to refill the valve body again. So we fill it back up, and each time it dumps out, that's the dump valve, it dumps out whatever's stored in here then it allows the valve to refill from your CO2 canister and sits there until the time that you fire it again. That's the basic operation. And like I say, the simplest way without drilling and polishing and, and a bunch of um, really more difficult machining maneuvers, the simplest way to increase the power in this system is to increase the amount of gas being stored inside it. So that's part one. That's the theory of it. In part two, we'll get to the practical application of actually modifying the valve. So I hope this makes sense to you. Go ahead and post any questions in the comments that you might have, and I will go ahead and get out part two so we can look at the physical cutting and polishing, those kind of things to actually make these changes happen. Hey, thanks a lot for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and do so. If you find this all valuable, um, maybe give us a like and also considering or consider becoming a member. Hey, thanks a lot. Take care. Shoot safely.